Hi, this is Paula Januszkiewicz, uh, or Paula J. Welcome to another episode of Secure Hacks Weekly. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about the most popular attack, which is pasty hash. First of all, what I need to say is that every single time when we are doing penetration tests, uh, pasty hash is one of the elements of the whole test. And the reason why it's like this is because uh, pretty much every company doesn't do anything about it, while attack is popular for the past couple of years. In this episode, I will show you how to perform the pasty hash attack, uh, what are the preconditions for it, why managing local administrator passwords is so important, but that's not everything. Why, for example, logging on with privileged accounts to workstation servers, it's also something that we should definitely pay attention to. And to the whole thing, I will use uh, the tool, which is quite a unique tool uh, by our team, which is not recognized by antivirus, and the link to it you're going to find on my blog. Okay, let's dive in. Okay guys, so you should see my screen right now and uh, let's perform the pasty hash. As uh, you may know, in order to perform the pasty hash, you have to be a local administrator. That is because of the debug privilege that we need to have. And um, on um, my screen right now, you have um, two consoles opened, one as a user, another one as an administrator. So, uh, of course, just to show you, uh, this is the console running as an administrator. We can spot this already by a list of uh, different kinds of uh, privileges. And uh, I am here uh, a local user um, and I'm the member of the uh, local administrators. So here I'm just a regular user and that's that that's the whole point so um in in general what i want to show you um is well first of all how to perform past the hash attack and the second uh, what is the uh, idea standing behind so uh, my user's name here is paula and uh, i will become a local administrator which i will use in order to uh, get access to another server uh, due to the single sign-on feature in Windows. So if you did not try it before, uh, stay with me and let's go. So uh, the first thing in order to perform past the hash we need is that we need to get the hash. And uh, there are plenty of tools available in the market that you can use, but be careful because a lot of them may not be really safe. Um, one of the examples is PW dump, which comes in many different variants, and uh, sometimes it contains malware, which you can find. Uh, you can find it, of course, in the internet. It's a free tool. Uh, the reason why we wrote our own tool, CQ hash dump version two, it's because um, we needed it, of course, for our penetration tests. Um, it's absolutely not acceptable uh, to execute uh, the tools that we don't know anywhere on the customer's uh, environment. Only the tools that are our tools um, or the ones that of course we know, um, these are the ones acceptable or the best is really to work on the offline data if possible. But um, it's a different subject. Let's dig in uh, to hash dumping. The first thing that I will uh, use, because uh, I need to elevate to local system, uh, well, the reason why it's like this is because in order to get access to a secrets hive in a registry, you need to be a local system. So there are plenty of ways we can do it. For that, I will use the PSExec that I was already showing in the previous videos. So that um, if you uh, stay with me, then you should be able to use it uh, for now. So SIDCMD.exe, I want to elevate to the local system. Um, privileges here. So where am I? You can see that I'm anti-authority authority system. That's great. And uh, the next stage, uh, let me go to my tools folder and I will use CQ hash dump version 2 with the option sum dump. This is the live hash dumping. And uh, we have here uh, two types of hashes. One of them is something that we call LM hash. And as uh, if you look closely, this is a mirror. So these values are um, just the same. And that means that this is an empty, um, empty password uh, over there. I, well, technically it means that I'm not using it. That's why it's, uh, it's empty. It's a predefined value. And these ones here, the ones after uh, column, is something that we call anti-hash or anti-LM hash. 
um, you can you can see two different names for that. Uh, basically, this is MD4 of uh, user's password, and um, we will be using this one in order to perform the pasty hash. So I'm here local Pola, and I want to become local administrator. So in order to do it, uh, I will, and I don't need to be a local system anymore. I can um, be in this console. So we will use for that purpose, in this case, Mimikatz, and it's our edition, as you see, secure edition, and um, we will grab privilege debug. Here we go. This is the privilege that we need to, uh, in order to work with processes like Elsas and so on. So uh, when we get it, uh, then the next stage it's going to be secure LSA, PTH for pasty hash. We speci specify the username, in this case administrator, and then domain local host, because in this case I do not um, have any kind of domain credentials, so we got it. And NTLM, and I'm specifying that particular hash. So this is this is the past the hash attack. It's very simple. And um, what I'm doing right now, I am authenticating locally, so creating for myself a token where I will be uh, a local administrator. So administrator SID 500. Um, so this is the case. So um, this is another console, the console that opened. If I do who am I, it's kind of uh, interesting because um, you got here, of course, information about myself, but that's uh, not really true because we do have already an administrative token here. And uh, the next thing that uh, we will move to is, of course, PSExec. And we will verify if we are able to get access to uh, that particular uh, server here. And that server is going to be 10, 10, 10, 200. And we would like to execute cmd.exe. Now, just to show you a difference, yes, because what I want to show you, let me start this console as an administrator. Yep, so this is the console that is uh, local. And the gray one is the console with the local administrator's token. So here, if I want to use um, psexec, from my tools folder into 10 10 10 200 cmd.exe uh, I'm not able to do it because the username or password is incorrect which is also very interesting because what kind of password we are talking about well in this case this is the single sign-on that I was mentioning we're talking about my own password that local security authority use in order to authenticate but it didn't work so that's the point. Now over here, when we've got um, the same situation really, but we've got the local administrator's token, we can try. And what we are doing right now, we're using our um, credentials so uh, that we are able to access that 10, 10, 10, 200. It takes a little while, but you will see that this is something that works. And just because locally, and remotely, so locally on my box right now, and on 10, 10, 10, 200, uh, the a local administrator is using the same password. We are able to move uh, around different servers. Who am I? And then I'm here, local administrator. So in the previous videos, I was showing you um, that scenario um, in order to implement LAPS, local admin password solution for management of the local administrator passwords but over here we will continue because I would like to show you how we are able at that stage uh, to uh, perform memory dump. Now this is a little bit of a challenge because we've got a remote console I will do host name uh, where we see that we are on the other server. M my currently local machine is a Windows 8 client this one is a web server. Okay so the point is that right now uh, we need to um, somehow upload a tool into the web server and this is a little bit of challenging because the only thing that we've got is the command line so um, we could do it for example by connecting with the psexec there is a c option for copying uh, but let's say we didn't do it so now what well we could use ftp <laughs> we could try to copy something from the network and so on one of my favorite ways is actually to use the powershell encoded command and uh, powershell encoded command allows us to be executed once 
on the box remotely. Let me show you what do I mean. I have prepared a little PowerShell script, which you can see over here, uh, where in this case, um, it's going to be two, um, where we will be converting uh, invoke web requests command, where we are downloading the tool into pd.exe. That's going to be the proc dump to perform the memory dump. So we got it. And we are converting this to base64. Yeah, so let's check what is in the um, base64 variable here. Very good. Here we go. So this is what we got. We can uh, then stream it to some certain file. So let's say base64.txt. And our base64.txt will be uh, a command that I will be using within the uh, PowerShell encoded command. So it's going to be like this. PowerShell uh, EC could be for encoded command. And then I will paste it. And then we've got the whole command ready. So I will copy this right now. And let's go back to our command line. Uh, well, first of all, I do not have a temp folder, so I need to create it here, md temp. And this is where uh, we will be uh, saving, of course, uh, all the data that we will download here. So it's see, you see it's empty. And uh, paste. So we are executing PowerShell and encoded command. We are downloading the stuff from the web and we are saving this in the folder. So that's going to be our case. Uh, we see a lot of mess on the screen right now, but that's not a problem because we are almost there. And this pd.exe is our prog dump. Well, for now, uh, what is important is how to use uh, particularly uh, these kind of tools because a prog dump, when you run it for the first time, uh, and this is the uh, knowledge um, about the tool before we run it, there is a uh, parameter accept EULA and this is necessary otherwise uh, you will get stuck in the remote console and then we will specify uh, the dump so we would like to perform the memory dump of the process LSA SS.exe and as you see the dump is being uh, written so dump is ready and as you uh, remember from my previous videos I will not repeat myself this time uh, you can take this particular dump and then use it, for example, within the Mimikatz uh, as for the memory analysis. And then we are able to extract information uh, from it. So just for the little reference, let me get to my another virtual machine. In the meantime, you see my raccoon. So let's get in here. And this is the place where we had our dump. So this is our temp folder. This is a dump. So we can do this, cut, and then we can get into, for example, some tools. I got here some part and I can rename it LSA as s.dmp. Yes. And I can open up Mimikatz and then secur LSA mini dump. And then we're going to run it uh, with the LSA as s.dmp. Very good. And secur LSA, just for the uh, demonstration, log on passwords and then what we, what we are able to spot in this dump of course is um, all the interesting data that is related with the user's credentials okay of course i'm doing this on the remote server right now so in the whole hacking process this will not be possible but uh, we are learning right so um, you can copy and you can try to copy that particular data uh, to your client back and then um, analyze it uh, on your site and this is how it's meant to be i'm showing you just an information what is in this dump. So what we just did, we have performed past the hash attack. How is it done um, in the infrastructure? So we already know. And um, all these steps you can easily reproduce when you are have the possibility to elevate into local system account, which means you are a local administrator. This is the prerequisite for the past the hash attack. Uh, so PSX can help, but only for education because you cannot use it for hacking. Um, and um, this is not according to the license. Uh, and um, then we've got Mimikatz and you can use it for the past the hash attack. Uh, you can use any like memory damper that you got. For example, proc dump can help you out also to perform memory dumps remotely. And uh, you are able to analyze that dump back using the Mimikatz that I'm showing right now on the screen. 
So this is a step-by-step -step tutorial how to perform pasty hash attack. Okay guys, that's it. Hope you like it. And the next episode will be about ransomware. So it's a pretty cool subject. If you don't want to miss it, uh, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, uh, follow me on Twitter or subscribe to our pretty nice uh, newsletter or just use all of that. Uh, definitely see you there.